In this video, we're going to be factoring trinomials. And we're going to be factoring trinomials where our leading coefficient is 1, meaning right out in front of this uh, x squared term here, there's a 1. And if you haven't factored trinomials before, this is kind of where you want to start, because these are the simplest ones to work with. So in this video, we're going to use the FOIL method to factor trinomials in this form. And then we'll also take a look at some uh, indicators so you can quickly identify the signs in our binomial factors that we get after we factor one of these trinomials. Factoring trinomials in the form x squared plus bx plus c. The process of factoring is the reverse process of multiplying. Let's take a look at some examples here. So factoring the number 10, and if I start with this number 10, factoring means I'm going to take this 10 and write it as a product of factors. And so, so we know that 10 is equal to 2 times 5. And so this right here, 2 times 5, is the factored form of 10. So in this video, what we're going to work on now is factoring trinomials. So if we go to factor this trinomial here, x squared plus 8x plus 12, what we're going to do is reverse the process of multiplying. And we are going to write this trinomial as a product of two binomials. In this case, x plus 6 times x plus 2. So to factor a trinomial, we need to clearly understand the process of multiplying. The acronym FOIL is used to help us understand the process of multiplying. And FOIL stands for firsts, outsides, insides, and lasts. And that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but once we use these words to describe the multiplication process, what it's going to allow us to do is to understand kind of every piece in that multiplication process so that we can kind of reverse it and factor trinomials. So as I mentioned before, with FOIL, firsts, outsides, insides, and lasts, it gives us a way to identify each step of the multiplication process. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Now let's multiply these two binomials, x plus 3 times x plus 2, using this FOIL method. And the FOIL method is really just following the distributive property twice. It just gives us a way to identify each step of this. So I would first distribute the x, and x times x, that's my firsts. And so that would give me x squared. Continuing the distributive property, I would say, okay, x times 2, notice we're looking at the outsides there, the outside edges of my two binomials. And so x times 2 would give us a positive 2x. Now continuing with the distributive property, I would say, okay, 3 times x, that's my insides. Notice now I'm on the insides of my two binomials. 3 times x gives me positive 3x. And then finally, the last step in this distributive process is positive 3 times positive 2. Notice there I'm doing the lasts. And so 3 times 2 would give us a positive 6. And so now what we have done is we've kind of put a name to every one of these terms that we've got through multiplying. Firsts, outsides, insides, lasts. Let's go ahead and finish this multiplication process here. And that has us adding these two middle terms. When we add these two middle terms, right, they're like terms, so we can add those together. We're going to get 5x plus 6. Now let's look at this final finished trinomial and see where all of these terms come from. Notice the first term in our trinomial is the firsts in our binomial. The last term is the next one that's easiest to identify. The last term in our trinomial comes from multiplying the lasts in our binomials. 2 times 3 gave us 6. The only one that's kind of tricky to see is this inside term, this 5x. That 5x came from outsides. Right here, the 2x was our outsides plus insides. That's how we get that middle term, outsides plus insides. Now that we've got a handle on this FOIL method for multiplying, let's use it to factor. And in this case, we'll factor this x squared plus 12x equals 20. Well, we know that we need to start with two sets of parentheses because we're going to have two binomials here. We also know that the signs in these binomials have to be positive because every term over here in my trinomial was positive. Let's start here with the first one. Remember, the way we get that x squared there is by multiplying our firsts. So the things that are right here in our first spots, those need to multiply to give us x squared. So we're thinking, okay, x times x. All right, now let's look at the last. 
the last term comes from multiplying these terms in the last two spots. Now it would be easy if that's all we had to consider. You know, if that's all we had to consider, then we could write in here, you know, 20 plus 1. 20 times 1 would give us 20. But the other thing that we have to consider here is this middle term. We kind of got to make sure that we get the last term and the middle term here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list factors of 20, things that multiply together to give me 20. So there's 1 and 20, uh, 4 and 5, and 5. There's also 2 and 10. So those are kind of all my factors that would come together to multiply to give us 20. Notice what we want to have as well, we want it to equal 20, which every one of these factor pairs would work. Every one of these one of these factor pairs would give us 20. But we also kind of want outsides plus insides to give us 12, which really means we want our factor pairs here to add up to 12. And there's only one factor pair that does that, 2 and 10. So if I put a 2 and 10 in here, let's take a look at this multiplied together and see what we get. All right, let's multiply this back together here and see if we got this factored correctly. So we would do firsts, x times x gives us x squared. Then we would do outsides, x times 10 would give us 10x. Now we would do insides, 2 times x would give us positive 2x. And then finally lasts, 2 times 10 gives us 20. And now we're going to add the outsides and insides, outsides plus insides, to get that middle term. And that's where we get that 12x in the center. So we have the correct factoring here of x plus 12x plus 20. All right, let's take a look at some examples here that will help you understand how to factor a trinomial into two binomials. So in example one, we're asked to factor this expression. Well, we would first look to see if we had a greatest common factor. Well, we don't have a greatest common factor. So if there isn't a greatest common factor, the next thing we try is to try to factor this into two binomials. So let's see, look at the signs now. Everything is positive, so that would tell me that down here in my two binomials, everything has to be positive. Start with our firsts. To get this x squared term, we're going to need x and x here. Those firsts would give us x squared. Now let's look at our last. So I need things in here that are going to multiply to give me 16. Well, there's lots of choices there. I could choose 1 and 16. Um, 2 times 8 would give me 16. And also 4 times 4 would give me 16. Now, one of these factor pairs is going to add to give me this middle term of 8. All right, let's see. Uh, 1 plus 16, that's not going to work. 2 plus 8 would give me a middle term of 10. That's not going to work. 4 plus 4, that will give me an 8 in the center. So I'd have x plus 4, x plus 4. And so one thing that we can do now, we've got this factored correctly, because firsts would give me x squared, lasts would multiply to give me 16, and add to give me the 8 in the center. So that's set up correctly. But notice I have x plus 4 times x plus 4. So kind of the shorthand way of writing x plus 4 times x plus 4 is simply x plus 4 squared. All right, example two. All right, there's no greatest common factor here again, so I would set up to factor this into two binomials. Let's look at my signs, though, here. Notice the last term is negative. That means the things in my last spots, one of those has to be positive and one of those has to be negative so that when I go to multiply them together, I'll get, an, in this case, a negative 12 as my answer. So I need an addition sign and a subtraction sign in my binomials here. Let's go now to the firsts. Well, I need x and x. The last, here are my factors of 12. Let's go ahead and list factors of 12. So I have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So all of these in this case, well, I'm going to have one positive and one negative. All of these in this case are going to multiply to give me negative 12. The only thing I really need to check and make sure is that I get this middle factor correct. And notice the middle factor there is negative 1. That's what I'm trying to come up with here, negative 1. Notice now, too, that when I go to add these outsides and insides, one of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive. So I'm actually looking for a difference in all of these factors as opposed to a sum like I was when everything was addition. So what I want is things that multiply to give me 12 but have a difference of 1. 
Well, 1 and 12, those have a difference of 11, so that's not going to work. 2 and 6, that has a difference of 4, so that's not going to work. 3 and 4, that multiplies to give me 12, also has a difference of 1. Now I just have to make sure I get them in the right spot. Notice, I want to end up with a negative 1 as my middle term here, which means I want to put the 4 here and the 3 there. That way when I go to add these, positive 3 plus negative 4, it'll give me a negative 1 on that middle term. Now it's time to check your understanding of factoring uh, trinomials into two binomials. Go ahead and pause your video player now and answer these practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Practice question 1. Well, I have a trinomial here. I look, there aren't any greatest common factors, so I'm going to go ahead and try to factor this into two binomials. All right, I look at my signs. Everything is addition in there, so I know that I need to have two addition signs in my binomials here as well. Okay, firsts, I need to come up with x squared, so that's going to tell me I need an x and an x. All right, let's see my last factors of 6. Well, my factors of 6 are going to be 6 and 1, 2 and 3. Well, we want to get a middle factor of 7, so I want to choose there 6 and 1. That's going to multiply to give me 6, add to give me that middle term of 7. So there's my factoring for the first one. Okay, question 2. Let's get our parentheses set up. Now we'll go to our signs. Notice the last term is negative. For that last term to be negative, I need opposite signs here. I need one of the signs to be positive, one of them to be negative. Okay, let's go to our first now. Again, we're getting x squared, so I'm going to need just x and x. Last, negative 15. Well, I already got the positive and negative taken care of, so we'll just list factors of, of 15 here. So I have 1 and 15, 3 and 5. All right, notice we're going to get a difference here because one of these is positive, one is negative. So when we go to add, we're going to get a difference. So we're looking here for a difference of negative 2. Well, 1 and 15, that's not going to work. That would give us a difference of 14 or negative 14. It's definitely 3 and 5. We just got to get them in the right spot here now. Uh, when I add them together, I want to be left with negatives. So I want to make sure I have more negatives than positives. So I would put the 5 here, the 3 there. Now let's double check. The outsides would give us negative 5x. The insides would give us positive 3x. So we have this negative 5x, positive 3x, when I add that together, that's going to give me the middle term of negative 2x. So this is the correct factoring. All right, question three. All right, let's set up our parentheses again. This one is a little bit confusing at first. Notice the last term is positive, but the middle term is negative. So what we want here is things that multiply to give us a positive number, but when we add them together, we want to get a negative number. And so these signs both need to be negative. A negative times a negative gives us a positive, in this case 15, and a negative plus a negative then can give us this negative 8 in the center. So now that i got my sign set up, let's go to the first, x squared again, so I need an x and an x. All right, now factors of 15. We just listed those. They're 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Well, notice these are both negative, so when we combine them together, we're going to add to make more of them. So 1 and 15 would give us a middle term of negative 16. That's too high, so that's not going to work. But 3 and 5, that is going to work, because if I take negative 3 plus negative 5, that will give me negative 8. So again, I want to choose a 3 and a 5 here. Let's double check the middle term again. Outsides would be negative 5x. Insides would be negative 3x. When I add those together, I'll get negative 8x, and that checks. So this is the correct factoring then. So now that you've got a little hang of, of factoring trinomials, now it's time to kind of start recognizing patterns. In mathematics, we always recognize patterns um, to make problems easier and also to kind of give us some more insight or understanding. So we're going to recognize the sign patterns here. When factoring a trinomial, we start by looking at the last term to help us determine the signs in our binomial factors. So first case is that last term is negative. And this is kind of the easiest case scenario because if the last term is negative, we know we have to have different signs here. The only way we're going to multiply things in these spots to get a negative answer is if one is positive and one is negative. 
So anytime you see the last term is negative, you can immediately go to the signs being one positive, one negative. Next case scenario is if that last term is positive. When the last term is positive, we kind of have two choices. If the middle term is positive, then we want to go plus plus. If the middle term is negative, then we want to go minus minus. Notice in both cases, we have the same signs. So when that last term is positive, we either have two positives or two negatives. And we simply look to the middle term to tell us whether it's going to be plus plus or minus minus. Now it's time to check your understanding of factoring a trinomial. So we're going to kind of move on here again and try some more of these practice problems. This time, make sure when you're starting out this factoring, you start by writing the signs in each of the binomials. So go ahead and pause your video player now and answer these questions. And when you're done, hit play to see how you did. All right, practice question four. We'll get our binomials down here. Start with our signs. The last term is positive. That tells me I have to have signs that are the same. Middle term is negative, so I need minus minus here. Now let's go to the factoring. The first is x squared, so I would need an x and an x. The last is 30. Let's write factors of 30. Well, I have 1 and 30, 3 and 10, uh, 5 and 6. Notice since both of these terms are negative, they're going to combine to make more here. So what we're looking for here is a sum of negative 11. 1 and 30 is out. That would give us a sum of negative 31. 3 and 10 is out. That give us a sum of negative 13. It's 5 and 6 that we need there to give us a sum of 11. So minus 5, minus 6. So sometimes students wonder whether it's OK if they write the factor this way, x minus 6 times x minus 5. And that is OK. Remember, the order in which I multiply something will not make a difference. So if you wrote x minus 6, x minus 5, that's fine. That will still give us the same, the same answer or the same factoring. Let's get our setup there with our parentheses. Last term is negative. Again, I think this is the easiest one. Last term is negative. We only have one choice, positive and negative. Sign's got to be different. Let's go to the factoring now. OK, x squared. That's going to be x and x. Now let's go factors of 24. So lots of factors of 24. 24 and 1, 2 and 12, uh, 6 and 4, geez, 3 and 8. OK. Now notice the signs are different here. One's positive, one's negative. So we're going to be getting a difference. We want to end up with a difference here of negative 2. So the difference between 24 and 1 is 23. That's not going to work. Difference between 2 and 12 is 10. That's not going to work. Difference between 6 and 4 is 2. These are the right factors. Now I just got to make sure I get them in the right spot. Notice I want to end up with negative 2 in the end, meaning I, need no, meaning I need more negatives than positives. So I'm going to put the 6 with the negative and the 4 with the positive. And that will give me my factoring of that trinomial. OK, practice problem 6. Last term is negative. Again, one positive, one negative. So we need x and x. Factors of 36. Uh, 36 and 1. 2 is going to go in there. Half of 36. Let's see. Maybe 18. All right. 3 is going to go into 36. 3 times 12. 4 will go into 36. 4 times 9. Hmm. And finally, 6 times 6. So lots of choices here. We want a middle term of 5x. And notice it's going to be a difference here, one positive, one negative. So we're looking for the factor pair that has a difference of 5. And that is right here. 4 and 9 have a difference of 5. Now I just got to get them in the right spot. More positives. I want a positive 5x here. So I want to have more positives here. So I'm going to put the 9 with the positive sign the 4 with the negative sign. 